Oh my gosh, just the banks acting like big banks again. This came out just a couple days ago. The SEC fined JP Morgan subsidiary for deleting 47 million emails, some related to subpoenas. Okay, so if you're not aware, and I'm sure these bullet points say it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. JP Morgan was put under um, investigation for various fraudulent potential activities, some including Je um, their relation to Jeffrey Epstein and helping him do all the sick stuff he was doing. Well, what do you know when the court order for documents come in, all of a sudden, all of a sudden 47 e million emails go missing. And what was the penalty? Now, keep in mind, this isn't you and me, okay? If, the, if we did that, do not pass go, do not click $200, go straight to jail. But the SEC wavered and they flip-flopped and they lost all sorts of sleep trying to figure out what to do. And they determined that the broker-dealer subsidiary of JP Morgan was fined $4 million. That's it. That's it. One of the biggest companies in the world. Um... And they got fined $4 million for deleting 47 million emails. Some of those emails were sought by subpoena in at least a dozen regulatory investigations. The SEC ordered JP Morgan Security. The firm in late 2021 agreed to pay $125 million in penalties for failing to preserve text messages and other electronic communications sent between 2018 and 2020. Um, but however, yeah, this, this new is fine. But again, this is a rounding error for them. Whether it's 125 or four, they plan, they plan for this stuff to happen. Um, and it's, it's unreal because you guys at home know if it was you and I doing that, we'd get in so much trouble, but here we are. Um, let's see, to add to that, as if the big banks acting like big banks wasn't enough. Uh, let me show you this little guy here. Tweet says here, breaking. The FDIC mistakenly releases complete version of a document showing U.S. government spent uh, 12 billion, 12.7 billion, sorry, I had to count the zeros there, $12.7 billion to bail out 10 wealthy depositors amid banking crisis in March. Okay, so you guys remember, back in March, Silicon Valley Bank almost went under. The top 10, 10 of the, I should say, excuse me, 10 of the biggest depositors were all Chinese. So your taxpayer money just went to bail out the Chinese people um, who, again, the rules are there for all of us. The FDI insured limits don't cover them, but you know what? It's probably the right thing to do. Um, it, it, you know, just give people money. Um, un unbelievable. And here, just to go a little more detail of what exactly happened, um, people were furious when they found out, wait a second, you just printed a bunch of money into existence. Um, and I'm going to show you this chart here in a second that shows they are just printing money into existence for this, but they just printed more money into existence and just gave it to a bunch of foreigners. Um, so check this out here. This is Fortune Magazine. FDIC has accidentally released a list of companies that bailed out for billions in the SVB uh, collapse. And I'll zoom in so you can read along with me for those of you who like to read along with me. <clears throat> okay. When federal regulators stepped in to backstop all of Silicon Valley Bank's deposits, they saved thousands of small tech startups and prevented what would have been a catastrophic blow to a sector that relied heavily on the lender. But the decision to guarantee all accounts above the $250,000 limit um, also helped bigger companies that were in no real danger. Sequoia Capital, the world's most prominent venture capital firm, got covered the $1 billion it had with the, it had with the lender. Kazoon Limited, a Beijing-based tech company that runs mobile recruiting app, Boss Ziffin, received a backstop for more than $900 million. A document from the FDIC, which the agency said it mistakenly released, unredacted in response to a Bloomberg uh, Freedom of Information request, provides one of the most detailed glimpses yet into the bank's big customers. And then again, it just goes into more detail and it kind of just gives you some background. Um, but it's unreal. Now, somebody here... Uh, Yes, here we go. Here are some of the others, but where somebody actually had the actual list um, of uh, these various foreigners and foreign companies, but essentially it's unreal. Oops, oops, sorry, I had the scroll button on there. Yeah, unreal. Essentially, uh, a lot of companies that had plenty of cash on hand, plenty of revenues that didn't need this, that also weren't even uh, American individuals or American companies, got billions of dollars. Now, let me show you this chart here. 
And, you know, I won't get too much into the, was it, was it needed? Was it not needed? Was it appropriate? Was it not appropriate? You know, I don't know. We could go all back and forth all day. That's an opinion. But I will say this. Just last week, one of the Federal Reserve chairmen said, right now, everything seems to be calm in the U.S. banking system. But going back to what I had just showed you about that, uh, the banking crisis in the last couple of weeks, were you aware that the U.S. government, the U.S. Treasury, essentially created a brand new bailout program back in February? Right here, you can see. Now, let me actually pull this real thing up. It is the Fred, uh, Fred uh, BTFP, Fred BTFP. Did you know, had you seen this yet? This is just a brand new program they created back in February. It's called the Bank, uh, bank Term Funding Program, BTFP, brand new, created out of thin air, and it is a way for the Treasury and the U.S. government to backstop uh, various uh, bank companies that may not be uh, solvent. Essentially, Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate Bank, all the rest of Signature Bank of New York, the rest of those banks that you've been hearing about. And when they first started this, they said, okay, $25 billion, that's what we're going to do. That's our limit. Don't you ask for any more because that's all that, you know, if you need more than that, well, doggone it, you've been irresponsible and you need to pick up the tab. But what's really funny about this, because you know how the system works by now, if you're watching, it started at $25 billion and we are just crossing 100 That's right. We're already at $102 billion that they have started saying, eh, yeah, we'll give that to you to make sure you go fine. We don't know yet all of the various banks that have received this money. I'm sure that very soon that those numbers, those that those data points will be coming out just because freedom of information and whatnot. But um, yeah, so going back to, um, oop, I missed it. But anyway, yeah, so the Fed is saying, yeah, everything looks very stable in the banking system. If it's so stable, then why are we already four times higher, almost three and a half times higher um, in basically backstop money? free make sure you don't fall apart banking money this doesn't go to any other industry allegedly and you know what i wouldn't be surprised if we find out in the future that this is actually going to foreign companies as well foreign banks in europe or asia or something like that as well so uh, it's just a very frustrating thing um, just more developments in the world of banking just more big banks acting like big banks you know one other thing uh, before i move on to the next topic here uh UBS, the UBS Credit Suisse thing is only getting more and more fun. Uh, let me see if I can find it here for you. Basically, um, they are still just like, uh-uh, this is going so poorly. They're already preparing everyone to know uh, that this is not going to work very well. Um, looking, okay, so I don't see it here, but just in the last week, uh, basically both, both, UBS and Credit Suisse and the Swiss government are saying, uh, you guys, this isn't looking so good. Even with the Swiss government guaranteeing us, uh, if in case we fail, this is not looking very promising for us. So, um, you know, whatever. Um, okay. Uh, 